Welcome to Morgan Live. I'm here with my boy Jamie Buchanan, Visual Perfections, History Channel, Dirty Old Cars. Jamie, we're going to get right to it today, man. So how's it going? Super. It's nice to be inside in the air instead of working outside for a little while, so I'll take the break. Yeah, I know, man. You're always working and down there cleaning those cars up. And, man, works hard. People don't realize that. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's constant. It's constant. It's, it's not constant. Stop. Mm. And that's, been, that's kind of been your forte anyway is you're, you're always there working hard. And, you know, when people work hard, you can, you know, the Bible says that there's a profit in working a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But he also says if you don't work, you don't eat. Exactly. So, We're going to talk about some subjects like that today and, uh, you know, different things, the way people perceive, perceive things and religion and church and, you know, translations of the Bible and stuff like that and mm -hmm. our youth and, 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 and how things have changed. We were talking earlier about TV and all the different apps and YouTube and all those different things that way things come at us now. It's a lot different, in, you know, in our day. Yeah, we had a... We had a telephone on the wall. If you needed me, you could page me by my pager. Pager, wow. Yeah, and then you would stop. And the coolest thing that we learned when we were growing up was you could actually pull over the curb and get the pay phone, dial the number and put your quarter in and bring the phone inside if it was raining and roll it up. That was when you were cool. Yeah, that's now, If you're standing out in the rain, you were yeah. a dummy. Yeah, that's You know what a, I mean? So oh. Then they started making them little half half standards yes you know, so it's yes. all kind of crazy things how the technology has changed and oh, everything what well, well, Jamie, talking about that and technology and things changing you know a lot of things i'm here now just uh let's talk religion you know we you know you're kind of you, you you grew up in church and you're doing a lot of things in church and you're changing so many kids lives and and to me that's the key and uh but you know then then as you're growing in church and go through church and different seasons of your life uh people come at you with all kind of different angles and stuff and now i think the current thing that people are talking about and they've been talking about this since i can remember about the new international version was kind of the first one but mm. all the different translations out there you know yeah and they got i think they got a new gay bible out there now i think somebody was telling me yesterday which mm -hmm. you know any bible to me is fine but hell, you know let's just get into that a little bit because you know uh uh, let's break that. What do you feel about translations of Bibles and, and the meanings and how the meaning may be deflated? So, you know, with anything, whether it's a sequel to a movie, whether it's another thing that you do at church, whether it's a, the second of anything, right? right? You're, you're going to, it's, I don't want to say it's going to become watered down, but you're going to lose some things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to use lose some verbiage sure. okay but the message is still the message yeah and when you look in our society and you look at the numbers for children yeah. and for kids right because that's what i study because right. i'm the youth guy right right it talks about how now it's like 87 percent once they reach the 11th grade don't come back till about the age of 25 right right and now you have all of these people that are that have been there, done that in their generation, mm -hmm. and I called them the older generation, right? Right. And you know Talking the Bible talks about gray hair, gray hair, and wisdom, right? <laughs> I ain't Mike, got I've, none, man. It's all clean. Listen, baby. I, I have not reached that yet. There's <laughs> yeah. no wisdom. There's a little gray whiskers, but there's no gray hair, <laughs> right. right? But so, but with that, when you are talking with the older generations, and they are they are so solid and they're so staunch yeah. on this one thing. Well, I think that's where you miss the boat. Right. Because if you look at Jesus in the times where he lived, right. it wasn't a continuous act. It was right. always love, grace, right. mercy. But he went to everyone, yeah. and he saw everything. Right. And we get to wanting everybody to kind of look like us and act like us and be toy soldiers. Yeah. And look, Jesus is the same, yeah. but he looks different to everybody. Yeah. In every culture, in every city, and you go, they worship differently, but they still worship Jesus. So if I could reach your kid that was lost, right? and let's say maybe he was, you know, drugs are prevalent at the moment, so let's just say he's into drugs and he's into heavy drugs, and I'm getting ready to go into witness to him, and it's your kid, and it's yeah. either... Pretty much life or death because he is so right. far down. Are you right. really going to care if I use a King James right. or an NIV as right. long as I lead him to the Lord? Right, right. That's what we need to look yeah, at. exactly. We don't need to look at, okay, this is how it is. Right. This is how it's always going to be. Right. Look, Jesus used all kinds of methods. Listen, right. he healed people. Right. He preached to people. Right. He fed people. Exactly. He saved people. So it's not a cookie cutter. Right. Like we try to make it. Right, exactly. And you have to be like kids... And, and the world teaches them, you know, by sports, by music icons, by 
rock and roll bands, look, you need to attain this status. Right. You need to dress like this and right. remember my name. Right. Kids, when they are growing up in the church, they see the preacher as, listen, that man there is he is ordained by God, and I know I will probably not be called to do that. Right. But when everybody looks like that, how do the kids think that they can ever to get right. from where they've come from, whether that's right. a broken home, whether right. that's looking at things they shouldn't be looking at while they're in their bedroom, if it's right. doing things other kids are wanting them to do or saying what they're saying? They don't think that they are worthy enough to get to that point. Right. So if you're not relatable, meaning they can't understand you, mm -hmm. they can't dress like you dress or look like you look, they're going to quit immediately, right. especially in this generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it's not easy, they're not doing it. Yeah, exactly. That's no offense. That's just how it works. That's the way it works. Well, you're exactly right. I, you know, I, I know people that you know believe that Jesus carried around a King James Version. I mean, that's where you know that's where he got all his references yeah. from. You know, <laughs> but you know, I, I've never really, I, I believe in the the purity of the word. But you know, it says in Proverbs, I can't think exactly where it might be in Ecclesiastes. You know, but it talks about the truth always bears witness with the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that, and Jesus talks about those things and the spirit and that kind of thing. But, you know, you know when there's some, something's not right. Mm -hmm. And how many ways can you translate God loves you? Yep. You know, that's my whole breakdown. I'm all about the simplicity now. I know as Christians, man, we got Christianese. We talk all kind of language, second coming, advent, all this kind of crazy stuff. And like you're saying, when you're there ministering to somebody and somebody's in a, in a desperate state, uh, you know, you're not having to do this or do that or do that kind of thing. You're there to rescue them, mm -hmm. to be a, a minister of reconciliation. So when you get into that, that's uh, you know that that's the simplicity of that is God. That's the Word made alive right there, loving God with all your heart and your neighbors yourself, mm -hmm. or the person that's dejected or broke down. And and thank God for the churches and the fabric of that and everything you're doing. Like you said, uh, you know we need those things. But that being said. All the translations uh, can water things down, uh, but the truth still, the cross, preach Christ and Him crucified. Mm. To me, you know, if that doesn't change you, uh, you know, you know, you're on your own in that regard. You know, <laughs> that's, a, that's why they call it a personal decision. A personal decision. Personal decision. Yeah, it's not for me to tell you how or what. It's to tell you, this is how you have a relationship. Right. Well, you know, God's always reaching, Jamie. You know, it's He's He's always reaching to people, and uh, you know, I, that's always what's on my heart. I know you're like that. You're always serving people and those kind of things, and uh, we, we get so political, we get so diverse, you know, race and all those things in church. You know, the body's diverse. Uh, you know, we try to make those things. I know in the charismatic world, in the non-denominational denomination, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we we try to put things together so to speak and you know we try to make people fit together and there's nothing wrong with black churches having black they, they worship different mm. you know you, you have all people can worship together that's the way it should be mm. i feel like that but there's nothing wrong people got their traditions and the way they do it and there's nothing wrong with that it's like business everybody runs their business different mm. you know if you want to go eat at this place go eat at that place it's mexican uh, soul food or whatever enjoy everybody but you know a lot of times we feel like we got to make people fit together mm. Mm. Instead of just to let them be their, who they are and the fabric of who they are mm. and, and let them be who they are and, and enjoy each other. That's right. That's right. When you allow people to be themselves, and listen, you, you're not going out of your way. You're just loving them first because that's what right. Christ did for us. People resonate with that, and they want to know why. Mm -hmm. Instead of you telling them why and you right. beating them over the head with the King James right. and telling them why, if you just show them. Right no matter what, unconditionally, then you move on, now you've planted the seed. Right. Now, they're the ground that it lands on, and maybe they're just not, maybe their ground's not ready yet. Maybe right. it's just laying on the top. Maybe it's penetrated the soil right. a little bit, but you just keep going back, and you're trying to push that seed a little further. Yeah. Now, look, God's going to water it. God's going to harvest it. Our job is to sow it. That's right. So I, I, some people may want to use a, a hand cranker for the seed. They may want to use a blower. They might want to use hand toss. Hand toss. That's different ways. Right. That's different versions. Yeah. But we're still getting the same message. Yes, yeah, exactly. The message doesn't change. No. Yeah, that, that's for me. You know, that's, that's why, uh, you know, 
I love the theology. I love the vastness of God. The you know and the people that study and the all, you know the analytical part. You know that's you know that's great. The scientific part. All the people that that God's raised up that do the things they do. It's amazing. But you know I'm a simpleton, Jamie. You know <laughs> I'm a simple person, and you know uh, you know things to me don't have to be as complicated as they are. And and I, I don't want to be that person that's that's is throwing up roadblocks in, in front of somebody's salvation or. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I know the power of the cross, uh, and the blood that was shed. And, uh, you know, I remember Lester Sumrall, you know, he loved him or hate him. Some people hate him. He was, he was very dogmatic, but at the same time he didn't tolerate, you know, people, you know, you know, watering down the word, you know, mm. and, uh, you know, there's different people got different ways of bringing the word about, but I always liked, uh, you know, that there's calling things out the way they are, you know, is this, this way it is. And people, they get offended by that. And it's, and, and, you know, it's easy for me to get offended. I've been offended by people that's, you know, said things about me or, you know, and they don't even know you. Yeah. Uh, you know, people get preconceived ideas about Jamie Buchanan, you mm-hmm. know, well, you know, the real story on Jamie? Well, no, I, you know, I, I don't want to hear the real story on yeah. Jamie. You yeah. Know? Is that I know your Jamie. version. That's yeah, your it's version. Your version. You it's know? your version. And uh, we all got to give an account for our mm-hmm. lives and our mm-hmm. versions and stuff like that. But in the meantime, the simplicity and, 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 and reaching people with the simple things, it's hard to miss that translation to me. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about the truth and people don't like the truth. Well, you know, when we dip and dive and dodge and we always talk about the past and, you know, we've done so many things wrong that the Lord couldn't love anybody like me. What it really comes down to is, and it's going to be a crazy reference, but if you look at Michael Jackson's song, Mm. The Man in the Mirror. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that song. Listen, you have to look at the man in the mirror and you have to face him. Yeah. And now you have to look him in the eyes and say, now this is the truth. This is who I really am. Right. But change and that's even in that song i gotta make a change once in my life yeah if you would make that change and understand that that step right is the most difficult step you'll ever take Mm -hmm. but it's the best step you'll ever take exactly and then you're walking away from the old nonsense and you're coming into a new life in christ that he's already had designed for you and all those all those barricades and blockades and pitfalls is him saying look I know the plans that I've got for you, and they're so much better than the plans you're making for yourself. Look, I have to destroy what you've planned Mm -hmm. because my plan is so much greater, but you can't see it. Yeah, Man, that's deep, brother. It (laughs) is. But we we want want what we want. And I teach my kids all the time, even your kid. From the age of one and a half or two, we start Mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. You know, we know God. Yeah. And a child, us as adults, and our kid. Yeah. And we're we're trying to help them because we don't want them to fall and get hurt. Right. We don't want them to get burnt, whatever it is. Right. But their inclination is, I can do it myself. Right. They don't want the help. Right. That's what we're doing to God. Yeah, exactly. And God's like, if you just only knew. Yeah. And if He showed us. Then we yeah. would be robots. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It would be artificial yeah. intelligence. It, it definitely. So I'm like he that wants now. us to choose that. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. It is a choice. You know, he gave us that in the very beginning. And I, I love that. And, you know, that's the one thing I'm saying about everything is you got a choice. My choice right now is really just to give to all those around me, all here locally and all the things that we're doing here locally. And you're a big part of that. You're part of the fabric of our community. And I think when people kind of lose the national narratives and all the things that's going on and they kind of concentrate on our family, our children, our community, mm. you know, that that's the narrative I'm hearing he, even here in North Carolina. That's what they're saying, uh, you know, that let's get back to the local community let's get back to the community colleges let's get back to the arts and the and the the trades and and mm-hmm. and, and just our family yeah. this is where our family lives mm-hmm. and uh you know and we want our children to have the best we want to have the best environment for our children and that's what i'm wanting to do i'm wanting to see all the arts and the music and and our lives and our children laughing and, and people's lives being intertwined and and you know but in the meantime we mm-hmm. fight <laughs> <laughs> we do yeah. we do but we we have the same inkling inside. Yeah. Like I've got this thing over here and I've got it turned off, right? Right. But now everybody wants to live in this make believe world mm-hmm. where everything is okay and I yeah. look good and I have money and I have all these things. But when it comes down to it, most of the time it's just a facade. Yeah. Even if you have all those things, 
what do you truly have inside? Right. Do you have that true happiness and right. joy that, you know, a lot of times we look inward to make sure that we're okay and we have everything, but true joy comes yeah. when everybody around you is okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're exactly right, uh, Jamie, because I was thinking, you know, just even in the last news cycle, you know, last the Murdaws down in South Carolina, you know, and this family's like that everywhere in every town and stuff like that. And you're, you, you, you see these families and they look so wonderful on the facade, but what's going on inside? I, mm. I know family, you know, our lives can be chaos. I know even in my own family, we, we made it through COVID, and I think a lot of people did, uh, you know, but we learned to live to one, with one another and know that we weren't going to kill each other, and that's a real thing. But, you know, we still have odds. Me and Josh and Benjamin and uh, Samantha and all of us, you know, we just like, you know, sometimes we knock heads and try and figure things out, but as a family, you can come together, you can work through those things, but somebody's got to, to be be the the leader. Somebody's got to have the compassion and, and mm. the willingness to serve, and you know, take the beating to say, "Hey, man, things can be better." Mm -hmm. You know, if we work with one another and help each other, we all we got. That's right. Sometimes we don't choose that though. Yeah. We we think the fake, the yeah. facade out there is so much better. Yeah. But listen, I can truly tell you that it's not. Just yeah. by walking with kids, walking with parents for so long, thirty one years, mm -hmm. like. The best thing that you have is your relationship with the Lord. Then you have all these other people, and that is your family. Yeah. That's your inside family unit and your outside family right. unit. You know, it's amazing to me, Jamie, in that scripture Jesus talking about, you know, uh, you know, that you can have turmoil in your own family. You know, you can have betrayal in your own family. Mm. You know, sin doesn't, ha you know, is not, you know, is not discriminatory or, or what's the word I'm looking for, discriminated. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't have a color. You know, it's going to get in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, you can see those different transitions in people. And I, and I think about that scripture, you know, uh, of, in, in my seasons of my life and different things I've gone through, and we've all gone through backstories and stuff like that. But it's amazing to me how God can take that and give us that information about, you know, uh, man, a friend... It says in Proverbs, a friend is better than a you know a brother far away. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes your family is not the people you can call on. You know, you've been more family to me. So, sometimes now my family's close. I'm just yeah. saying you've been more family to me. Some of my Christian brothers and sisters and stuff like that. You know, that's a whole different. You know, that's a universal family. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, at the same time, you have your natural family, but. You know, those spiritual friends and, and people you have, you know, they're important in your life. Yeah, the, and those people come with a common denominator. Yeah. It's Jesus. Yeah. And the love that he gave for us first. So that's why we love first with our friends and worry about whatever's going on later. But if you ever notice, Jesus never came at anyone. Mm -hmm. He always came to them in a story form. Mm -hmm. And that was the disciples. And that was the same with the religious establishment. Mm -hmm. And those that are like-minded with the same heart know right. who the shepherd is. And right. if they don't, then they're not going to follow. Right. Because he says, my sheep know my voice. Hear his voice. And you you know those people. So we, we love those people that are kind of unlovable and we think that we shouldn't be loving them. But those are the ones we should be loving. And our family, they know that they're already loved. Right. Well, Jamie, let's change gears again. Uh, you know, what can we do for our kids? What do you see that the kids need here? Uh, you know, you, you're, you're traveling all over the United States and the world and, and, and with your business and things that you've done and people you've run into, and, and you've seen different communities. And uh, what is something you see uh, that, you know, could really uh, happen here that you see at some other places that, you know, because uh, you're a kid person, you, you you know the water parks and the you know all those kind of. I always think water park because I'm so hot right <laughs> now. You know we got to have a water park. We got the Catawba River, but you know that's close to the enough. shop. We'll wet you with the hose. I man. know. Well, that's that's true. Clean me up. Yeah. But you know what? What's some amenities you you see that could be really cool? You know, for the community, for kids, the next year. What, what are they looking to do? This day and time, man, they just they don't even care about things or stuff. They need a place to hang out, mm -hmm. but they need it to be a controlled environment. Right. Okay. Um, and they need they they really need your presence. Yeah. They say they don't, but as long as you're present, yeah. you don't have to be present all the right, time. Right. 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 You know, but we get so caught up in trying to become better. Yeah. Trying to have more. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, after we get those things in a couple of months, 
they're not shiny and pretty and new anymore. Yeah. So we really don't want those. Right. So do we really know what we really want? Exactly. Look, it. I can tell you with kids, it's presence, mm-hmm. meaning in their life. Yeah. Don't don't be a, a dad that created them and never be their father. Right. Right. And love no matter what. Now look, right. we have to learn those things because man, when you get in them teenage years. Yeah. They're, they're trying to make their independence on what they've been taught, but also what they see. Yeah. And then unconditional love no matter what. Mm-hmm. But then you have to have the integrity of the family. Right. Meaning dad's not out running around acting crazy and giving no time to the mom and to the house. It's not just you are a businessman right. or you have a job. Right. Listen, you have a job that you've been called by God and you've been fortunate enough to have a present of the gift of life of yeah. a wife because he says you better consider that. Right. As fine rubies and pearls when you yeah. find a good virtuous woman. Yeah, man, I've got the best, man. Yeah, man, I do too. Yeah. I mean, I have, I honestly have Wonder Woman. Yeah. I <laughs> promise you I do and I tell everybody that all the time. Yeah. And then God has given you the gift of life in your kids. Yeah. So, you need to be a father to them as he's been a father to you. Mm-hmm. The dynamics of the world will change very, very quickly. You know, you see all these people on TV talking about that you can five times your incomes, ten times your incomes, ten times your money. What about if we did that as a Christian right. family? Right. And we took two families and we just interjected our life yeah, into them. exactly. And you think in ten years yeah. we've ten times the population the pendulum's going to swing. Oh yeah, in the favor of the Lord. Yeah. Instead of trying to reach for all these things that may work. Right. God's word's been proven time and time yeah. again. It don't fail. It don't. Love never fails. It doesn't. You know, oh, that's, no, it does. That's not. the one thing I'm. You know, that love never fails, man. I take the blows, brother. <laughs> you know, Jesus mm. took the blows. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and man, him going up the hill. I always think, man, if he can go through that crap, man, I can go through anything I'm going through. So yeah. I, I don't want to give up. You know, you want to give up sometimes. I know a lot of people out there. They they get weary and well doing. They get weary and 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 the fight and and all those different things. And man, Jamie, I, I'm with you 100 percent with the kids and stuff like that. They need your prayer. Presence. Yes, uh, and if you're not present, you know that's a we get so involved in our lives, our own lives. Everybody's trying to find their own life. They're trying mm. to find me. Who yep. am I? You know. Then you got a kid running around. You know. Well, you know. Then you start. You know. People don't realize their lives are so complicated, and and they're doing things, and and things are happening. They're reaping what they sow, and they get next thing you know, they're in the hole, and you know the kids, or you know, are they being presents for them? And that's where God comes in. Mm-hmm. That's the only hope we have. You know, is uh, man. You know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter the craziness, the chaos. You know, God will. Give you hope. He will help you, uh, and because I know a lot of families now. That every, it seems like every person I talk to, every family is concerned about their children. Mm-hmm. Pray for my children. Watch over my children. You know, our children. You know, that's how we understand God's relationship with us. Is mm-hmm. you know what we would do for our kids, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we've got to keep building on that. We got to keep being present for them, and we need people like you in the community and and people around the world that's that's rising up and fathers rising up. You know, I've I've uh, you know raised a lot of different children you know I've, I've been married three times uh you know i left one i've talked about this a lot and uh you know one left me and you know now i told samantha hope there's no more leaving <laughs> you know but through all the kids and the children and the different dynamics through all those relationships uh you know i always consider people that's been married a long time the gold standard and i, and I mm-hmm. celebrate them for that uh, but then the rest of us, like me, you know, we got to deal with all the damn chaos mm. and the, the, that we've created, and, and and not listening to God and being hard hearted, like Christ says. You know, that's the only. There's no excuse for anything other than we got hard hearts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but God can repair children, and He can help us. And all those children now, they they've come back into my life, and they're working, and and just. Because of trying to keep God in the center, even through all that craziness, we th- we think that we're the you know nobody sinners in church. We think that that people that look pretty and are you know lives are going on. But the Bible, you know, David and all of them, man, those those guys, you know, I'm encouraged by how mm. how wretched they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you know I can be pretty wretched, uh, but you know God still used them, mm. and God uses people like you and me and and all of us to to pull everybody together and help each other. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. And if you look, Jesus didn't pick any perfect people to write about in the Bible. Right. That way we could relate yeah. in some form or fashion yeah. to someone 
because it takes all kinds to make the world right. go round. It did even back then. Yeah, and it changes us. That's the thing that Christ changes your heart. Yeah. You're never the same. You know, when I received Christ as my Lord and Savior at 13, man, it was very emotional for me. And I wept for an hour. And the gentleman, uh, Mr. Bower, sitting with me, one of the disciples, or one of the disciples, one of the uh, deacons in the church, you know, he probably was like, what's going on with this kid, you know? But that's how impactful the Lord is to you in your life, no matter. Mm. Some people are not emotional at all. I know Lady Marcia McElwee, uh, you know, she was the only person I've known, a dear family, a church uh, grew, grew up in, in South Carolina, a shield of faith, you know, dear family. She got saved off a track, you know. Now, you, you don't, you know, this is the power of the word. Mm -hmm. Our words are so important, Jamie, and how we, we treat one another and our children, how we talk to our children, how we inspire children, be present for our children. And I'm glad people like you are, are around, Jamie. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thankful for God for people like you mm -hmm. that, that walk like that every day, work hard and family and, and so on to the kids and stuff because that's, that's a vital thing. Listen, you know I love them kids, man. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to tell you funny. So we were at camp last week. Now, Ben's been to camp with me many years. Now, yeah. Ben's too he old. He cried to the first time, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, now, he won't say that. I shouldn't even say that. He, he was homesick, but I hey, was, that's I've okay. I've been homesick. He, yeah, it's okay. But, you know, he grew He grew out of that, yeah, right? Yeah, he did. So we're, we're at camp, right? And now, look, we are with 1,500 kids. And, like, we are, we are absolutely moving around, and we're doing our thing. And the first night they come up, they're like, okay, now, look, this place is packed. I even have a video, right? Yeah. And these kids are worshiping. Then they're like, okay. I need all the youth ministers and youth leaders to stand up. And, you know, there's 40, 50 of us, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. You just kind of scan the room and yeah. look, and they're going, all right, who's been in for three years, you know? And everybody's still standing up. And then, then he's like, well, now, if you haven't been in more than three years, you know, you need to sit down. So they go to five, and, you know, a few sit down. And they get to seven, a few more sit down, and 10, and a lot of them sit down. And then they go to 15, and then there's like three of us left. But now these other two guys, they kind of look like Moses and Aaron. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they're you way, you was gonna they get way up there. And I'm like, dude, these guys have probably been in here for like 78 years, yeah. and I'm not going to go anywhere. You know, yeah. We get to like 22, and those guys sit down. Then they're like 25, and I'm still standing. And he's like, okay, man, that's enough. Just come on up here. <laughs> so so I go up there, and I like, it's been my 31st year, right? And yeah. they're looking at me like, how old are you? Yeah, how old are you? I said, I started when I was three. And, you know, and they're like, come on, man. We're just, and I was like, no, no, really, I'm 50. But then it, it the pendulum swung, and I was like, man, it seems like I, my, my time is almost out with those kids. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm way oh, older than everybody. Jesus. Way old, yes. So it was like, it was almost like, oh, you know, because. I don't ever want it to be over. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. always young at heart and running yeah. with the kids and playing and thrashing, yeah. but it's like, man. Yeah. It was it was eye hope. Jamie, you're gonna run to the end, bro. You know why? Because Caleb and Joshua, and they they were the only ones that Caleb at 80 years old, man, I'm still ready to take that mountain. That's mm. the mountain I want right there. And God gave it to him, and he was still ready to do it. Yes. Because they believed the promise. Yes. And uh man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> get, get me crying. Look Woo! out. Put the glasses on. Mm, we'll give it yeah. James at. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh but yeah, that's real stuff, Jamie. And 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 man, that's uh Man, I'm loving it. I'm loving every bit of it. Me too. Me too, buddy. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm here with Jamie Buchanan, man, Visual Perfections, man. If you got a car that needs clean, he's your man. Jamie, tell me a little bit, you know, in your business and stuff like that. Now, we reflect, we, we try to keep politics and religion out of everything. I know I do. Everything you see out there now, these companies that are, you know, kind of putting their religion and stuff in their, their mouth and, and standing a certain way, uh, I've always kept that out of my business. I, you know, me personally, y'all call me whatever you want to call me, but I want the greens. I want the Benjamins, and he comes. If you stay green, I'm good with you. You don't have to worry about all the religion and politics. Just I want your business. I want to help you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, what do you think about you know that kind of stuff when people start mixing religion and politics in their business, and you know that comes out of your heart. You know, you can do whatever you want to do. It does. It does. But when that comes out. It kind of shows your relationship, yeah. Because I'm a relational person, right? And you, and as well as about everybody in my town knows. Look, I can walk up, shake your hand, look you in the eye, yeah. and now we're friends. Yeah. You don't have to do anything yeah. for me. You don't have to do nothing. But that relation, yeah. That relationship. That's yeah. what I want to convey yeah. to those people, right? You know, you have your opinion. Mm -hmm. You have your do's and don'ts, or sure. your druthers, right? Right. I don't have any of those. Yeah. 
this is what I do. This is who I am because this is who God called me to be. Right. And that's it. I, I'm, I'm not going to beat you. I'm not beat you mean beat you down right. with whatever I believe. Right. I'm just going to show you what I believe. Right. And if if that is the relationship that you want, yeah. that is great. Right. But if that's not, I'm still going to love you the same. Yeah. It doesn't bother me right. what you choose. Still going to you wash know, your car. I'm still going to I'm I'm <laughs> it, you could call me in the middle of the night and say, "Jamie, listen, I need you to move these trusses for me. Right. And I'm going to move them trusses. I know you would. I mean, and you I, have. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. Because, by the way. <laughs> yeah, by the way. Oh, yeah, we got to get yeah. no, I'm just kidding. The boys are there. We yeah, got some good boys good now. now. We got yeah. some good dudes right. now. Some great ones. You right. were good, but you were getting too busy. So, yeah, right. so now Thank you've you. had to spread it out. Right. So, yeah. Thank you. You can only do so much. Mike. You can only say much. Yeah. That's but right. you're right, what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's just purely relational. Right. It's, it's not about if you believe, hey, that's amazing, but... This is what I believe. I'm going to show you. And if you want to ask me a question, I will tell you. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's really, that's how Jesus presented it to everybody. Right. You know, and look, they even had their opinion. Right. They tried to stone him, kill him, hang him, drag him. It wasn't until it was his time. Right. So I live by that too. Until yeah. the Lord calls me home, I'm not really in fear of no man or right. what happens. Yeah, you that's know, awesome. I'm, I'm just going to love them and yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's well that's that's our narrative. That's our go in all the world, you know. And, mm. and 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 when it comes to locally, that's me. I'm I'm like that local 101, be it be on the job, be there working, you know, be there in presence with your children or whatever the case may that might be the case, that might not be the case, but be there present with yourself. You know, I've always just depended on the Lord, you mm. know, when cuz I had a lot of loss in my life at a young age. And so, to me, that that's that's our only lifeline, Jamie. Is is the is the Lord, Amen. you know? And that's 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 what we're reaching out to say. Hey, man, if you need some hope, man, that's that. Reach out to the Lord, man. He'll answer you. Mm-hmm. He'll he'll reach you right where you're at and your brokenness. No matter what you've done, no matter what you sin, no matter where it's at, the power of the blood is very powerful, you mm-hmm. know. And, I, and so, I, I encourage people, man, just reach out and God will change your life. He will. And once you encounter Him, it's a definite, abrupt change. Thanks once again for joining us on the podcast. Jamie, thanks for being here, man. Join us anytime. Yeah, love it. Be, it's my favorite time to come in and sit in the air conditioning and talk to you and, and try to help people again. Try to give them, you know, truth right. and fact. Exactly. Stay tuned for Morganton Live. More things coming.